Welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to go over some things to avoid doing when you do an acid wash, and I'll also go over the preferred acid wash method that I would recommend you do. And of course, I'm going to have cautions here because you can do an acid wash wrong, and you can really mess up a pool pretty badly if you don't do it correctly. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open 7 days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. I think a lot of mistakes happen right at the bidding process when you're at the pool and you're talking to the customer. I think a lot of times you can overpromise results. I really think that you don't want to do this because results vary from pool to pool and you may have been really successful with other acid washes. You look at the pool and it looks like it's going to be easy and you won't have any problems. And then it turns out that the pool didn't come out as nice as you thought it would. The customer was like, hey, I thought you told me that you're going to get all these stains out. I still see some here in the shallow end. So over promising and under delivering is a problem. So don't over promise. I always go into the acid wash and I tell the customer, that the results will vary. I can't guarantee the pool will come out better, but from previous acid washes, they do look better. And to kind of keep it vague like that so there's no high expectations, I find that the lower you leave the expectations, like if the customer is like, hey, is that possible to remove that stain? You can tell them, well, I mean, it may come out, it may not. We won't know until we do it. And if you leave it vague like that, and then the stain does come out, the customer is extremely happy. And if you go in there promising the moon and don't deliver, that's when you have problems initially. So you want to drain the pool and you want to drain it according to your city's code. Now here in California, Southern California, Los Angeles County, you cannot drain a swimming pool into the street, which is into the gutter, anywhere where the water is going to run off into the ocean. That's not permissible. You have to drain it into the sewer line. Where's the sewer line? Well, you have to find it in the customer's yard. Sometimes it's in the backyard by the kitchen, where the kitchen is against the wall. Sometimes it's in the garage. It's a lot of cases in California. It's on the floor of the garage. Other times you can't find it, and so you may just want to use the waste discharge for the washing machine. It's one of those things where you have to find the sewer line, and sometimes you can't find it. And then you'll have to get creative on how you want to drain that pool. I don't want to say anything here, but, you know, there is something to be said about when everyone's sleeping, it's a good time to do certain things. And that's as far as I'll go with that. But you want to drain the pool and you want to make sure that it's drained. So when you get to the next morning, you're ready for the acid wash. Now, there are a few cautions with draining the pool. And I'm not talking about pop up because that's pretty rare. You'd have to have the ground extremely saturated with water for that to happen. And here in my area, we don't get six or eight inches of rain in a short period of time. Maybe in Florida and Texas, you have to be more cognizant of the pop-up. But I still think that's extremely rare. It's not an urban legend because it does happen. But it's not something that's extremely common. But what I worry about mainly, especially in California, is draining the pool when the outdoor temperature is too hot and the plaster is exposed and the sun's hitting it. When it's over 95 degrees, I would say 90 degrees would be your baseline. Anything hotter than that, the sun's hitting the plaster. It could cause damage to the plaster. And I've seen this happen before where the pool was drained. They're doing some kind of work there. It wasn't me doing the acid wash, but I've seen this happen where it was a customer wanting to fix a few problem areas in the pool. He wanted someone to patch it. It wasn't me, but they let the pool drain. It was like probably 98 degrees that day. The next day was 97 and then they refilled it up maybe, I guess, sometime during the week. I'm not sure. But basically, the plaster started chipping because they, let it ex- they left it exposed to the sun. And it did damage the plaster. So extreme heat is something to avoid when you're doing an acid wash. Don't drain a pool. And if you're going to drain it, fill it. Make sure it's filling before it gets too hot. But you don't want to drain the pool when it's really hot and have the plaster exposed. So I would say in the evening is a good time to drain it. And then, of course, the next day you want to finish the acid wash in the morning and then refill it. Now, there are a few things that can go wrong with draining the pool. And I've 
had this happen before. It's when you put the sump pump in, you plug it in, and for some reason the customer feels like they should turn it off when they go to bed. That's a problem. And I think, you know, this happened when I got to a pool and it wasn't all the way drained yet. And it's really irritating, but I was able to drain most of it before I started. That wasn't too bad. It just delayed me a little bit. And this is something that could happen. Someone could turn it off or it could trip the GFCI and then the pool's not drained. So make sure that the pool is completely drained. I would have the customer, if you're going to get there early enough to where they're awake, of course, and not too early where you're going to disturb them, just, you know, ask them, oh, is the pool drained? I want to make sure. Send me a photo. That way you know that it's completely drained and you, you can get everything ready to go. Otherwise, you'll have to go over there, and if you have someone helping you, that's problematic because you'll be just standing there waiting for the pool to finish draining. So one key thing, you know, when you drain the pool, verify that it's drained with the customer. Maybe even at night, let them know that, you know, when it's finished today and after in the evening, let me know when the pool's fully drained. That way you have a heads up. Just to avoid a problem, and I've had this happen again, where it wasn't fully drained when it was supposed to be. I briefly mentioned the helper. I think it's a good idea to have someone helping you with the acid washes, mainly because it's easier with two people. One person can be rinsing it while you're doing the acid wash, and it's something that really comes in handy, especially when you're trying to get a spot that's really stubborn and you need someone to have the water right away because you're using a heavier acid-to-water mixture. These things are critical, and I think it's important to have a helper with the acid wash and to help you through the process. It just makes things faster and easier and more effective and efficient. Another thing that you may want to make sure that you do all the time when you're doing an acid wash is that once you have the basin empty, there's going to be a little bit of water on the bottom, of course, an inch maybe or so by the main drain where you have your sump pump. You want to make sure you fill that area thoroughly with soda ash and that you want to cover that standing water with some soda ash you know, a good amount of soda ash because you want to neutralize the acid as it's being drained into the sump pump and being pumped into the sewer. You don't want to have the acid in that water, a high acid concentration in the basin because that's going to leave a ring in the basin as you're doing the acid wash or after you finish it, I should say. So you want to have soda ash and replenish the soda ash when you can to make sure that that particular water in that basin has a really high pH so the acid has no chance of discoloring the plaster in that area. It's a crucial, important aspect of an acid wash and something to consider. Now, some take the light fixtures off. Others, like me, I'll just put some soda ash around the fixture and the screw so that the acid is not going to damage anything or maybe run down and cause like a little run at the light, like a little streak, I should say. But I don't really like taking the light fixtures off because I've had problems before where I couldn't get them in correctly again. You know, they're old sometimes and I just feel like it's better not to mess with it. Just put some soda ash around the fixture and call it a day at that point. Now, as far as the mixture you're going to use for the acid wash, I think this is critical. And I think this is where a lot of mistakes are made because you're using either too little acid, too much acid, and you're not using the right products in this. And so I would refer you to the Biodex acid wash. I really think this is the best method and one that's going to have the best results. So the Biodex acid wash you can find the steps on their site but basically you drain the pool and if you want to do a chlorine wash I should back up a little bit and mention that sometimes a chlorine wash is necessary especially if there's black algae or other algae because the acid won't take the algae off the plaster necessarily the chlorine will and you want to make sure that you dilute the liquid chlorine during the chlorine wash thoroughly with water you don't want to use straight chlorine because that could turn into caustic soda especially if the sun hits it and that's not good for the pool and it's just going to be a lot of problems. So you want to make sure you use at least a maybe two to one or three to one chlorine to water mixture so that it's not straight chlorine being poured onto the plaster and you want to dilute it for that reason. You don't want to have that caustic soda forming when the sun hits it. And you want to make sure that if you are doing a chlorine wash and an acid wash right after that you do thoroughly rinse that plaster and you make sure that the basin is completely chlorine free. You you want to rinse it, drain the basin with a sump pump and make sure that there's zero chlorine in there because you do not want the acid going into the basin with a strong chlorine concentration there. That would make a something similar to mustard gas. It's kind of like when you open up a bucket of trichlor tablets and it's wet inside there. 
That's the same effect you're going to create in the basin of a pool where you're doing a chlorine wash and don't thoroughly rinse the pool and don't thoroughly, thoroughly drain the basin of chlorine. You're going to have that mustard gas kind of smell, very toxic, very overpowering. And I highly recommend doing the chlorine wash, rinsing it, letting the plaster kind of dry a little bit to make sure you know there's no chlorine residue. But rinsing it thoroughly is the key if you do need to do a chlorine wash prior to the acid wash. So back to the Biodex acid wash, you're going to need a five gallon bucket. You should have plenty of these laying around. If you go to the pool shows, you're going to get one from American Leak Detection. So you want to pour two gallons of water, warm water if it's really cold out. If you're using cold water, it makes it a little bit harder. So a little bit of a warm water mixture. And then you want to pour in one gallon of acid. Now I use 34, I use the 31.45% strength muriatic acid. I really recommend this strength because then you're going to have to maybe double up the acid amount. It's really hard to calculate unless you're using the 31.45% strength. It's the best acid strength to use for an acid wash in my opinion. So if you're getting the acid at Home Depot, you may want to double that up so that you do get to at least 31% of the muriatic acid content when you're doing the acid wash that's critical. And then you want to pour in 8 ounces of plaster white and bright. Now this is pretty good to use because what this is going to do, not only is it going to make the plaster whiter and brighter, hence the name of the product, but it's going to thicken up the acid mixture when you're using it and kind of make it, um, I wouldn't say foamy, but it, there is an effect that you're going to see. If you watch my video where I'm doing this process, you'll see the effect that the plaster white and bright has and the acid to water mixture. It just makes it thicker basically. I guess that's an easy way of saying it. And that thickness really helps as you're pouring it onto the plaster and it just makes it easier to do the acid wash. You also want to use eight ounces of Aquadex 50 stain off. Now this is a good metal stain remover and having this in your mixture will help with any kind of metal staining and to get rid of it. So if you're just using water and acid, I don't think it's going to be as effective and I'm not Anyway, selling products for Biodex. I'm not a salesperson. I like their products. I have no association with them except that the products are great. And I think that if you use the 8 ounces of Aquadex 50 Stain Off, along with the Plaster White and Bright, you're going to have a great acid water mixture to use. Now, what I do is I like, I don't really like using a sprayer used with the mix. I'm kind of old school. Now, you can use that. A lot of pool pros will put it in the sprayer container and then spray it onto the pool. I just like using a plastic watering can with, of course, you know, you, you can either use it with the thing on the front that gives it like a rain effect, or you can use it without, it, depending on how skilled you are. I kind of like using it with the rain effect, you know, like the nozzle and your hose when you have it on spray. Similar to that with the watering pot, I really like using those because it's easy to control as you're pouring it and you're controlling the pour. I really think the spraying is good, but there's not as much control from the top down. In my opinion, it's easier to use the watering pot and then pour it from where you have the tile line and let all of that kind of drift down onto the plaster itself or pebble tank itself. And this is a great way to make sure that you're getting a uniform acid wash mixture onto the plaster or pebble tank without it streaking. A lot of times if you're using the spray, you may miss an area and then later when you're spraying it off and cleaning it, you'll see a streak area or an area that's not quite as nice as other areas. The flower pot or the flower watering pot is kind of a way of making sure you get a uniform pour. And then your helper will be spraying right behind you with a garden hose to make sure he washes off the acid water mixture. Pretty much right away after you pour it, you want to have that sprayed so that you're not, again, causing streaks or having one area that's going to be lighter or darker than another area. I really think that's important to make sure that you're not having any problems with streaking. I've seen acid washes where there's been a lot of streaking, and you want to make sure you avoid that. So the key is the acid wash mixture, I think, and the other key is how you do the acid wash. Remember again, Soda ash in the basin because you're using quite a lot of acid. If you look at this mixture, it's a five gallon bucket with a one gallon of muriatic acid in there, which is a really concentrated amount of acid. And you may need to use two or three of these five gallon bucket solutions, depending on how bad the, how big the pool is, I should say, 
and in some cases how bad the staining is. You may want to go over another time with the acid. Now remember you're taking a thin layer of the plaster off with the acid wash. You don't want to use a very strong acid concentration. Sometimes it helps if you are using a 5 inch wood tile brush. Some people use a 10 inch wood tile brush. But I prefer the wood of course because you're dealing with acid and you don't want to have a metal pole in there of course. It's probably not the best thing to have in there. So the wood tile brush is great. And then once you pour the acid, it does help sometimes to get this tile brush and brush the wall and then have your helper spray it. It just depends on how bad the surface is. I think brushing is key for a lot of acid washes and most people are going to have a brush already that they use for acid washes. And then the pad can either be a five inch or 10 inch pad. I like the five inch pad because then you can really kind of fine tune the brushing and get in there and get some of that acid water mixture spread out. Of course, with the white and bright, it's gonna make it thick. So brushing it, it's gonna make it kind of foam up a little bit, but it's not a problem because you have your helper that's gonna rinse right behind you. So again, acid water mixture, the one I mentioned, the Biodex mixture, pour it with a watering pot along the top from the tile line down, get your brush, brush it real quick up and down and you want to do maybe a two foot area at the most at this time so a one to two foot area with the when you're pouring the acid get the brush brush it real quick if you need to and then have your helper spray it and that's pretty much the process and you want to work your way around the pool in a pretty good pattern doing the walls first and then starting on the shallow end and step areas in the shallow end start working your way down to the deep end from the center of the pool all the way down, not missing any areas, and you wanna keep a consistent pattern. A few more cautions here with the acid wash. Something to be to consider is, of course, is having the proper foot gear. I like just using regular rain boots you get at you know the Home Depot or an army surplus store. These rubber boots are great. They go up you know, about two feet or a foot above your ankle, and they'll protect you from any kind of acid getting into your shoes. I like wearing long sleeve shirts and I also like wearing a 3M gas mask. I think that's important to have the proper, of course, breathing or respirator so you don't breathe in any of the acid fumes. There was a video on YouTube where a guy was doing an acid wash barefoot. Don't recommend that. I think that's pretty hazardous. You can slip. Besides that, you are walking in acid in a acid and water mixture. So I don't think you would want to do that. And then, of course, before you even start the acid wash process after you drain the pool. Sometimes you don't notice this, why the pool is filled, but sometimes you'll notice that when it's drained that the plaster has some chips and cracks you didn't notice. I wouldn't really think about it seriously that you probably don't want to do the acid wash, or if you're going to do the acid wash, you want to use a really, really light acid to water mixture because any pool that's chipped or cracking with the acid wash, you could actually damage it even more. I mentioned that you're taking off a thin layer of plaster when you're doing the acid wash. So if you see chips and cracks in the plaster, chances are you're going to take off a layer of that and expose even more chipped and cracked plaster. So definitely, you know, use kind of your your common sense in this case where if it looks like it's going to be a bad idea to do it, I would just do a chlorine wash for the customer and then I would fill it back up with water and tell them that the plaster is just too far gone for the acid wash and discharge them maybe for the drain and refill and chlorine wash and let them know that you couldn't do it because the plaster just wasn't in good enough shape. You should be able to tell visually before you drain it, of course, when you're doing the bid that this is the case. So be aware of this one problem that if it has chips and cracks, don't drain it and acid wash it. But if you have drained it already and notice some defects, don't continue with the acid wash. I think it's a mistake. It could cause more problems than good in the long run for the customer and for you yourself as as far as liability. Pebble Tech is pretty indestructible, but I also have the same rule. If I see cracks in the Pebble Tech or if I see chips in the Pebble Tech, I won't acid wash it because chances are you're going to weaken that surface even more. So use your judgment there when you're before you even start the job to make sure that it's going to be completed without problems. Make sure that the plaster is intact and in good shape. And then, of course, if you underpromise, which I recommend you do at the beginning, and the results came out spectacular, the customer is going to love what you did and love the acid wash process. I think one caveat I should throw in here is that sometimes some of the stains aren't coming off because there's a lot of calcium buildup on there. You can rub it with sandpaper and then pour the acid, and that should alleviate that. But it's actually a whole other process if you realize that 
a lot of the stains are covered in calcium or calcified over it. You'd have to really power sand that entire pool sur surface. If you're doing a 15,000 gallon pool, it'll probably take you eight hours to do. So this is a kind of a two-step process at that point. You're power sanding the entire pool surface on a cool day. Mind you, nothing over 90 degrees because you're going to leave it empty until you ask to wash it the next day probably. And you want to make sure that the customer is aware that this is a not really an acid wash. It's more of a polishing of the surface and then an acid wash after that to finish everything up. But I wouldn't consider power sanding the entire pool part of the acid wash process. It's a whole separate thing. And you may run into this problem, especially if the pool is really old, hasn't been maintained properly. You'll know right away when you're pouring the acid and none of the staining is coming off and you're rubbing your hand on the plaster and it feels like sandpaper and really rough. In that case, you're going to need to power sand the entire pool surface down and then maybe do a light acid wash after. If you're looking for other podcasts that I've recorded, you can find those on my website, swimmingforlearning.com on the banner you can see a podcast icon click on that and that'll bring you to a menu of over 1500 podcasts that you can listen to and if you're interested in the coaching program that i offer you can learn more at poolguycoaching.com thanks for listening to this podcast have grace your week and god bless real quick if you're not using pool service software try skimmer free for 30 days at get skimmer backslash pool guy again that's get skimmer backslash pool guy skimmer everything you need to run your pool service business all in one app Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open 7 days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's Referral Program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.